Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and it's been a busy couple of weeks, so we haven't had a news update, but we had the release of iOS 17 public beta, security updates, and more. But this week we expect even more updates, and we have a lot of news about iPhone 15 with greater battery capacity, price changes, and more. This is your news update for the week of July 17th, 2023. And if you prefer to jump around past the news and just look at the iPhone leaks, check out the chapters in the description. Now, one of my favorite games I played on the iPhone for quite some time is back in Apple Arcade. Ridiculous Fishing EX is now available, and this game is ridiculous, but actually a lot of fun. And I'm not really that into fishing, but this game's pretty fun, just a quick thing to play, and is available on Apple Arcade for free if you subscribe to that. So you can download it now and play it as available. I'll definitely be playing it pretty soon. If you're within China, you've probably already got WeChat on your phone, and this is actually used for just about everything there with marketplaces and more. And Apple has added a new store to the platform. So if you're in China or you use WeChat, there's a new Apple store available there. Now, one thing I wanted to mention is if you're using threads, I'm on there as well, but if you're using threads, be sure to update in the app store as it fixes the issue where you couldn't add a photo and it would crash the app. There were workarounds where you could copy and paste a photo, but that's been resolved with the latest update. And if we go into threads, you can see my profile here. And if you want to join, check it out in the description. I'm also of course on Twitter and everything else, but be sure to check that out and update if you haven't already. Now, if you have a Tesla and maybe you're even interested in it, the latest version of the app actually has AirPlay built in. It's not activated yet, it seems, but this is a step in the right direction where you would be able to AirPlay your information from your phone, maybe to the display on a Tesla. Now, they don't have any plans to add CarPlay, unfortunately, maybe we'll see that in the future. But at this point, at least that's a step in the right direction. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned how an auction went live for a four gigabyte original iPhone. This is my iPhone. This is not in perfect shape, but a perfect one in the box sealed went for an unbelievably high price of $190,372.80. You'll see this one actually works. We can unlock it and go into the main screen. The battery's low, of course, but this is fully functional and these can be had unboxed for a couple hundred dollars online and they fully function still. So if you want to get one, I don't know if it's the best way to get one sealed in a box, but let me know what you think about that with that four gigabyte model. Apple has made their latest back to school deals available in many countries already and is now extending that to Europe, Asia, and the Middle East. They're offering up to a 150 euro gift card or a free pair of AirPods or different discounts as well. So that's available in many more countries now. Let me know if you're seeing that in the comments below. Low. However, an even better deal could be from today's video sponsor, CaseCo, where you could win an iPad by trying to help others with how you relieve stress. I've shown you this CaseCo CloudCush case once before, and maybe you've seen it in my other videos. It utilizes air cushion technology around the outside edge to absorb shocks and withstand up to a three meter drop. It has raised protection for the rear cameras and front display, keeping that protected if you want to set it down on its display, just like that. And it has a super smooth feel and has colors to match your phone or just accent it differently if you'd like. You'll see this is the purple color accenting the deep purple iPhone. And starting today through August 12th, CaseCo is offering a chance to win an iPad. I'll leave a link to CaseCo with a discount code in the description along with the Case Coup iPad giveaway details and how you can enter. Be sure to check it out in the description. Apple promised new CarPlay updates working with manufacturers to give us not just CarPlay itself, but vehicle integration with support of vehicle functions and gauges. Porsche is the first to support this with an update they rolled out, which allows control of climate settings and lighting. Now this is only available on different models that have the latest version of their software, such as the Taycan and more, but that is updated now and you should be able to install that using a QR code from the app. So you can use the QR code on the display, sync it with your iPhone, and then you'll have more functionality from the car itself directly in CarPlay. I can't wait for more manufacturers to bring this out as well. This past week, we had a ton of different software releases from Apple. We had public releases with iOS rapid security update 16.5.1a, which launched and then was later pulled as it was causing some issues going to certain websites. Later that week, Apple released iOS rapid security update 16.5.1c. It replaced it and 
added that same security fix from the first version, but then added fixes for the first version problems as well. I'm not sure why they didn't release it as B they haven't said, but you can see both of them here on Apple's security website. So we have rapid security response 16.5.1 a and C above it. So if you want to see about that, it's also the same for Mac OS Ventura, which had the same issues and then they re-released it. Of course we had iOS 17 public beta and we also had iOS 16.6 updates and we're expecting even more soon. Now we did have beat studio buds, which got an update to version 10 M four, three, seven, two. We're not sure what was in it, but they didn't update any other beats as well. So we just got that along with an AirPods firmware update for beta testers. We also got an Apple Safari technology preview update to version 174. Apple seems to update this every week and it brings it up to date with all of the latest technologies so that if you're developing for things on Safari, whether that be extensions or just your web page and you want to make sure it's using the latest technology, it's available to preview and check out both on iOS and Mac OS Sonoma. Now this week we're expecting iOS 16.6 RC or release candidate. We've had all the way up to beta five. That's what we had last year with iOS 15.6. I would expect the release candidate as soon as tomorrow. Typically we could see it later today, but usually Tuesday or Wednesday is when we'll see that with a public release, probably the following Monday. Usually that's what Apple does. Also, I would expect iOS 17 beta four. However, we don't know if that's going to be this week or next week as last year, they actually released it two weeks after the public beta on the 27th of July. So we could see it this week. However, I think it's probably unlikely, but we never really know. And I would love to see that update either way. Typically after beta four, we'll go to a weekly release cycle where we'll have weekly releases all the way through August until we get to September where they release it to the public. So we should see a lot of different updates and refinements over the next month or so. Now, as far as weekly rumors and leaks, well, this fall, we're expected to have at least two Apple events. According to Mark Gurman, the first would be the usual iPhone event where we could see the iPhone 15 and 15 pro models, a new Apple watch. And the second event would be for Macs. We could finally see an updated M3 iMac, a spec bump M3 13 inch MacBook air or 15 inch MacBook air and M3 MacBook pro. We could see them just bump the specs. I wouldn't expect a redesign as all of the designs are fairly current and Apple typically uses those for about three years. Of course, we could see more iPads at those events as well, but many people have said those will be in 2024. Also, we're expecting a larger 32 inch display. According to Mark Gurman, that could be a larger iMac also, but that wouldn't be until 2024 or 2025. Now, when it comes to iPhone 15, there's a lot to talk about today. I have some of the model units here that I've shown before, and we originally expected more of a red or burgundy color, but it seems a darker blue is what we'll be getting. According to unknowns 21 on Twitter, that makes sense. We've had different colors such as Pacific blue in the past. We've had Sierra blue and maybe have a new blue would make sense as it seems to be a popular color. Instead of purple, we could go back to a blue color. I'd like to see some differences, but either way, I'll welcome welcome that. Also, we're said to get titanium frames. Of course, we've heard that before and it would have sort of a shade on the frame as well. If they can find a way to do that. Also iPhone 15 pro max is expected to cost more this year. That's according to analyst Jeff Pooh. The 15 pro is expected to be more expensive to start than the current 14 pro at 1099, but the 15 pro is expected to cost even more. It makes sense if it's made out of titanium, it costs more to machine that. And also it would be more expensive because the larger sized iPhone is expected to get a periscope zoom camera. There's more cost involved in that. And of course it bumps the price for them. That would be an excuse for them to do that. And maybe we'll see a hundred dollar price increase. However, I would love to see the same prices, but the big news for a lot of people would be that the iPhone 15 is finally expected to have much larger batteries this time around a Foxconn worker leaked information to it home and claimed that the iPhone 15 models would get a significant bump to battery size. For example, the iPhone 14 has a 3,279 milliamp hour battery. The 15, the base model could get a 3,877 milliamp hour battery with the pro max. We would go from 4,323 to 4,852 that would extend the battery for at least a couple hours. Most likely we definitely could see those. And I really would welcome that in an iPhone. 
And recently a leaker said, this is a new leaker called RG clouds S who's a newcomer to Apple leaks, but has leaked Android information in the past has said that Apple is working on stacked battery technology. This would allow for greater density in a similar space, which makes sense if they're going to utilize the same sort of area, but we could have greater density and also could prolong battery health due to the material actually used. So that would be something I think most of us would welcome. The leaker also claimed Apple is looking into faster charging up to 40 Watts instead of the current 15 to 20 Watts. So we could see much faster charging, but that could be for iPhone 16. The leaker wasn't sure later this year, we're expecting a new series nine Apple watch, but with nothing groundbreaking as far as overall design. But a few weeks ago, Mark Gurman said that Apple would be launching a new Apple watch ultra that wasn't heard of until that point, as many thought maybe it would be on a two year cycle. I would personally welcome that, but Apple tends to update their products yearly. So we'll probably see a new one. And now Ming Chi Kuo is saying the same thing, but also that the new Apple watch ultra is going to have 3d printed components made out of titanium. It could be the buttons or the digital crown and the parts could be smaller components such as those that I mentioned already, or maybe just internal components as well. It could reduce cost of machining the parts as titanium is difficult to machine given its hardness. And we've seen some of this sort of 3d printing of titanium from other companies such as Koenigsegg, but they don't mass produce. So maybe to see it on mass production would be a whole new process, but either way, it looks like Apple could be utilizing that technology. So I can't wait to see what we have as far as the next Apple watch ultra. I think it's pretty great already. I don't know that it'll be worth upgrading, but of course I'll test it out once it's released. And so that's everything with the news this week. We're hearing more and more about iPhone 15 as production is ramping up to get ready for millions of phones to release later this year. Be sure to check out our sponsor case in the description below. And if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.